Al Franken performed this month at the comedy club QED and is preparing for a national comedy tour. New York Times is reporting today that he's being mum about his political future. Asked if he's prepared to run for office, he's saying, you know, anything's possible. Al Franken now lives in New York. He used to live in, in Washington, D.C. Well, I guess he lived technically in Minnesota, but he had an apartment in D.C. actually in my, in my neighborhood. I would see him walking his black lab around the neighborhood <laughs> sometimes. I'd say, oh, there's Al Franken. Uh, his daughter, who's a healthcare lobbyist, lives in, lives in D.C. Uh, it's a family but, affair. A family affair. Now he's, now he's in New York, where he obviously lived for quite a long time as a, as a star on Saturday Night Live. So if he has a political future, that would mean that it would be in New York. Does that put one Kirsten Gillibrand in the hot seat? It certainly puts him on a collision course with Gillibrand, who is up in 2024. Right? So, if everyone remembers, Kirsten Gillibrand was the person who led the charge in Congress to push Democrats to push Franken out of his seat after allegations surfaced that he had, um, well, there was the picture, of course, right. from the radio host right. in uh, Vegas or in California, um, where Al Franken was mimicking, grabbing her breasts right. a few inches away. Um, she accused him of making unwanted sexual advances, including kissing her. Um, and then he also faced all of these allegations that he had sort of groped women's behinds while they were doing right. photo Ops. Kirsten Gillibrand was the one who led the charge for him to be removed, which actually provoked a lot of backlash after the dust settled, mostly, right. from people on the left, a lot of thinkers and writers who said, well, wait a second, was this actually the right move? Al Franken was pretty beloved on the left. I mean, he was a favorite of a lot of people, someone who people talked about perhaps running for president one day. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the Gillibrand Franken possible mashup? Do you think he wants to run against her? I, I'm sure part of him does want to. Uh, and she wasn't the first senator to call for him to step down, but she was the first woman senator. Yeah. And once once she did, then then there was an avalanche, and. And that and that kind of that that ended it. And she was out in the media being very. She, she seemed to want the media attention for calling uh, for his resignation. Yeah, and there and there there kept there kept being new allegations coming out every couple days, which was making it untenable for for Franken to to hold. Maybe not untenable, but it it, it was untenable in that in that scenario. He's, and he did he did resign. He had attempted to say. Let the Senate Ethics Committee investigate mm -hmm. this. That didn't. That didn't fly. There was too much pressure. He dropped out. If people remember, it was in the midst of the Roy Moore yes. election. They were saying, what, "What? You know, we can't take on Roy Moore if if we're distracted by our own Me Too problem here." But yes, Franken has become an avatar for Me Too backlash, mm -hmm. which I which I think is actually regrettable. If 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 there were, was going to be an avatar for it, it should be Alex Morse who was the candidate in, in Massachusetts, who was accused uh, anonymously of vague allegations while he was running in a primary against Richie Neal and was ultimately completely vindicated, even though he, his campaign was, was destroyed. Whereas Al Franken, it does seem like he got handsy yeah. with, with people in, in, in photos. Uh, there, were, there are so many allegations that came forward. Now, people will say, but is the is the right way for that to be handled the end of his career. And, exactly. and that's where you have him as this avatar for, for Me Too overreach. And so uh, the New York Times article you know, has this moment in it where a guy comes by him on the sidewalk and tells him, I'm in your camp. <laughs> and the reporter writes that, that, that the comments seem to go beyond politics. And I think that that's, that's well said, because there is a camp of people who just, who, who Think of Franken as the symbol of Me Too having gone too far. But does Franken want to be that guy? Because that's a, that's, a, that's a bit of a weird place to be. It is. And then in some respects, though, he is the exact right person to be that guy because he is somebody who has, has had a good relationship with the feminist left, who has persuasively to the left been a champion of women um, and women's equality. And so to, in some respect, if anybody is actually going to be that guy, from that, the left's perspective, actually, it's better that it's Al Franken than it is some sort of like centrist that is really disliked. 
The in your camp comment is such an important one because I think this one is, I, I think this is not just about Me Too backlash. This is about media frenzies. This is about the way that we adjudicate and we litigate these complicated questions in the court of public opinion, which is right now so distorted and the, the justice is so perverted because of social media and because of the feeding frenzy that it creates in the 24 hour news cycle on cable, but also just on Twitter. Everybody's racing to uh, you know call for a resignation or to to you know to call for uh, against a resignation mm -hmm. and so I think Al Franken really for uh, Democrats that may have been uh, perpetuators of cancel culture may have been perpetuators of me too overreach including the title nine Obama era title nine policies by the way that they supported long before me too um, I think that was a moment of kind of self-reflection and political these are all political footballs, and where there's political footballs, politicians are going to love to score points right. in either direction. They're not going to have clear moral standards. It's just not how politics works, because the only clear moral standard is power right. and, and winning points. But in this case, I really think it was a moment of, of introspection for Democrats. And the, the reporter asked Franken in, in the article, uh, have you forgiven your, your colleagues? And he said, I have forgiven the ones who have apologized. Oh. And so it, it does seem like there's a kind of Monte Cristo thing going on here, that he's got a <laughs> list of people that, who wronged him and have not apologized. Whether he can actually pull it off is a totally different question. Uh, he, he tried a little bit of a, a reputational rehab with a Jane Mayer article yes. in, the, in The New Yorker, which did not come off, I think, as, as he had hoped. Uh, on, on the other hand, you have seen the pendulum swing in his, in his direction. Also, 2024 is a very long time away. Also, Kirsten Gillibrand really torched her career in a lot of ways uh, with, 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 what, with the fallout of this. She ran for president, people might forget. She was feted in all of the glossy magazines mm -hmm. as one of the top contenders for the presidency in 2020 in the primary. Yeah. And she had spent years cultivating a, a base of, of wealthy donors, many of them uh, you know, feminist, fe feminist yeah. leading ideological uh, wealthier women yep. uh, who, ha who are older because they're rich. Yep. Uh, they all turned on her, <laughs> like that, which, which, is, which is an unspoken uh, gender aspect of this, that this is not men are in one camp and women, women are in the other. It's much more generous generational mm. than that. And so without that base, uh, she could never really get off the ground mm. in her presidential campaign. So w it, 2024 could be off, awfully interesting. And I would say that that presidential campaign added another layer of embarrassment to the, the Gillibrand sort of arc. Um, it's another thing that hasn't set her up, I think, for success long term mm. as a politician in the way that her trajectory was being predicted um, and to some extent crafted by mm. the media and by the Democratic establishment, just like two mm. years ago. So uh, this is really something to watch. That would be a, a mm. fascinating matchup. And now I don't think this will happen, uh, but if Franken pulled votes away, you know, kind of moderate establishment votes away from Gillibrand, that opens up a lane on the left mm. for Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, oh who could come in with 40% <laughs> and then win the primary. That would be something. Uh, Forty to 35, thirty-five. Like that, it would, I don't think that's going to happen, but it, but that's a, that's a very realistic scenario. I kind of hope that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> I would really enjoy that. It's going to be interesting. Although Democrats will probably be in the minority by then, so they'll just be ruling over the ruins of their lost opportunity of <laughs> yeah. 2021. But well, we'll, give the people of New York the we'll options. See. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have more rising right after this.